Zillicami is the second half of the rap group known as City Morgue, and to many the main star of the duo. However, he wasn't always like that. At one point, Zilla was just a humble kid growing up in Bayshore, New York. Being raised alongside his half-brother Righteous P with a single mother watching over the both of them, Zilla's crazy music videos and violent lyrics may paint the picture of a war-torn demon fighting for his life every day, but his childhood really wasn't like that. There were some issues, of course, like many of his family members being drug addicts and of course being exposed to the gang violence and degeneracy of New York at a young age, but this is par for the course for a kid growing up in NY State. For the most part, Zilla's upbringing was pretty chill, mundane, and normal. Just like most rappers and musicians in general, Zilla was very influenced by music in his childhood, listening to metal bands and getting inspired to create his own music at the age of 13. This is when he would form his band called Scud Got Quail, which he was the bass player, forming the band with a couple of his middle school friends. Of course, like many other garage bands though, it never really went anywhere, leading Zilla to focus more on his other hobbies like skateboarding and jujitsu. However, music was his true calling and would come back into his life a year later when his brother Righteous P would discover an artist named Daniel Hernandez. Hernandez, also known as 6 9 Danny had the look and style that P was looking for in a rapper, being able to mold Takashi into any form he saw fit, but the one undeniable fact about him was that his bars were terrible. Colorful hair, can't compare to the lyrical phenomenon, that's right here. Mars, Jupiter, Venus, origins and oranges, combined solar eclipse, your mind is an eclipse of the origins. This would lead P to have to seek out a ghostwriter, eventually asking Zilla to help write raps for Takashi. This was great for Zilla as at the time he had been writing lyrics for quite some time in private, with hopes of eventually showing the world what he was up to. At the time, being so young, he was too shy to appear in front of the camera. So instead, Zilla ended up writing multiple songs for Takashi, like his debut track, 6 9 as well as Pimpin' and 47 6 9 Eventually, Zilla even got to appear as a feature on 6 9s song, Yokai. This would give the world the first glimpse of Zilla Kami. Sure, he was still a sidekick to Takashi, but he was still part of the movement, and he was finally getting a chance to express himself. Things would get even better for Zilla when he would release a track with 6 9 called Helsing Station, where Zilla was actually the headlining act, with 6 9 serving as the feature. Around the same time, Zilla met another rapper named Sos Mula through Righteous P. The plan was to position Sos Mula as the third member of the movement and release a track together including all three members called Sinaloa. Unfortunately for the crew, this would never happen as a falling out took place not long after. Now I have a whole video going into detail on what happened between Zilla Kami and 6 9 so you can check that out if you want, but for now the short version is, Zilla was left behind by 6 9 who took the Scum Squad name, completely destroying the momentum that he had going for him. After the falling out, Zilla found himself defeated, seeing his artistry taken from him with little to no thank you. He ended up becoming depressed and quitting rap for a while. If that wasn't bad enough, more misfortune would hit Zilla soon after when his girlfriend would leave him and his money would run out. One stroke of luck, however, Sos Mula was finally able to come home after being locked up throughout the entire year of 2016. By early 2017, him and Zilla knew they had to get back on the horse and start releasing more tracks. Zilla would kick things off with his Life is a Horror Movie EP, which had much more of a moody vibe to it, representing the depression Zilla was going through post-Scum Gang. However, it seems that he didn't really like this release as he would soon after delete it, claiming he wasn't a fan of the style anymore. His real comeback song, was Go, being a collaboration with Sos Mula. The pair dropped the track on SoundCloud and immediately found themselves getting buzz. Turns out the pair still had some fans left over from the 6 9 days and the more aggressive style they were harnessing was striking a chord with people. They continued dropping tracks like Baddage Patch Kids, Yuck Mouth, and Kid Cuisine, the latter being a diss track aimed at the ex-team member Takashi 6 9 As well as working with Sos Mula, Zilla would also collaborate frequently with the group GCSY, dropping tracks like Are You Ready Kids, War Paint, and Gang Shit. City Morgue was really coming into their own at this point, working for frequently with a producer known as Thrax, the producer who sold them the unused Sinaloa beat back when they ran with Scum Squad. However, the first time he worked with them on a track that actually got released was Yuck Mouth, which also had a little bit of drama surrounding it, so if you want to know about that, check out my Thrax video. As time went on, the numbers continued to go up at a decent pace, but it wasn't until the group dropped Shiners 13 that they truly hit their stride. The song went crazy on SoundCloud, leading them to drop a video for the song on World Star Hip Hop, which managed to gather around 15 million views in its entire lifetime. The video itself was insane, being removed from YouTube multiple times for having too many scenes of drug use, firearms, and overall just pure insanity. City Morgue really didn't hold back when it came to showing the dark sides of living in New York, leading many onlookers to take notice, and among these onlookers was Republic Records. Righteous P managed to work out a deal, signing an agreement that the group would remain under the Hikari Ultra umbrella while gaining the assets of the Republic Records promotion machine. This was a great deal for both Sos and Zilla, as both their solo careers were still independent, only the group projects would be controlled by the label. They would follow Shiner's 13 up with 33rd Blackstreet, Street, another big hit for the more, gaining almost 7 million views in its lifetime, finishing the trilogy with their track Skatehead, which of course was accompanied with another insane music video. By the summer, City Morgue was appearing on the No Jumper podcast to promote their movement even further. They would drop an EP in August of 2018.
2019 called Be Patient meant to hold fans off until the release of their first real album, City Morgue Volume 1, Hell or High Water. Zilla would also appear on Denzel Curry's album Taboo, featuring his song Vengeance. This was a huge deal for the Morgue, forming a friendship with a big time artist like Denzel. He'd even go on tour with him the following year to promote the album, showing fans just how insane City Morgue is in person. By October 2019, Volume 1 would drop, blowing fans away and establishing the Morgue as big players in the underground. They followed that up with Volume 2 called As Good As Dead and another mixtape called Toxic Boogaloo. It's clear the Morgue was consistent at dropping great music, accompanied by even more insane music videos. As time went on, however, fans would begin clamoring for a solo project by Zilla, which he would deliver on when he released his Dog Boy album in 2021, showing another side to Zilla, that he was more than just a loud, hardcore rapper and can also do softer songs, proving that he had a lot of range. It seems around this time, Zilla would unfortunately fall out with Cameron Nazi and Subjects, as he claimed that they were forcing him to get on songs and he didn't really mess with them anymore. Uh, actually, I don't give a fuck. Listen, that shit would never happen because niggas like to claim that we forced them on songs and shit. So, like, imagine a nigga telling you that we forced a nigga on a song. Like, what the fuck? The fuck type of shit is that? That shit's whack. With one bridge burnt between a past collaborator, another would open when Zilla would release a track with Lil Uzi Vert called Badass, as well as a track called Dead Desert with Trippy Red, Travis Barker, and Scarlord. At this point, it was clear to see Zilla was breaking through to the mainstream. Many fans were hoping Zilla would leave Sos Mula behind and start releasing his own solo music, but Zilla instead stuck with Sos, releasing a City Morgue Volume 3 and going on multiple more tours with him. However, it does seem like once City Morgue Volume 4 My Bloody America drops later this year, the group will finally be splitting up, but not before going on one more tour alongside acts like Ghost Mane and the Suicide Boys. There's no bad blood between the two, but it does seem like they want to go their separate ways and start making solo music in hopes of growing as artists. So Smula already has two solo projects with the third one on the way, so Zilla definitely has some catching up to do. Probably because Zilla spends most of his time practicing jujitsu and working on his car. I'm hoping Zilla goes for a more melodic route for a while to show the rap game his range before returning back to his more aggressive style. However, as things stand right now, we have no idea what's going to happen to Zilla. In my opinion though, the sky's the limit and he he definitely deserves to be up there with the greats of SoundCloud rap. He's ruled the underground long enough. It's time for Zilla to take over the rap game and save it from its increasingly mundane status. So shout out to Zilla Kami and shout out to Knife Gang. If you made it to the end of this video, leave a knife emoji in the comments below so I know that you did. And if you want to be really cool, you can also subscribe because I'm trying to make it to 3,000 subscribers. I couldn't do it without you guys and your comments just mean so much. Telling me that I'm actually doing a good job with these videos means the world to me. So thank you so much for that. And most of all, as always, thank you for watching. Bye.